listening to me? Can you hear me? Let's talk about mental health. Hello, and welcome to Can You Hear Me? Let's Talk About Mental Health. I'm your host, Stephanie Davis, and I am the Senior Executive Assistant to the CEO for Mental Illness Prevention Partnership. You are probably wondering, who is this woman? And what is exactly Mental Illness Prevention Partnership? Glad you asked. MIPP is a woman-owned business that provides programs and services with a focus on mental health. Our services include assistance to courts and criminal justice organizations in helping mentally and criminally impaired ex-offenders, military veterans, and those who are displaced, at-risk youth entering the juvenile justice system, and persons involved in domestic violence. We're in the business of helping other people to help transform their lives. In these extraordinary times, Life as we once knew before this global health pandemic no longer exists. You've heard the statement, we have to get used to a new normal. Not only has the pandemic impacted our mental health, but other current events, such as systemic racism, social injustice, health and economic disparities, shelter in place initiatives, and having to wear a mask while you go out, even going to the trunk of your car or the mailbox while practicing social distancing. We're experiencing isolation from our loved ones, friends, acquaintances, and coworkers. This health pandemic has made us reflect on the need for human interaction and shows us how precious life truly is. With this podcast, we expect to provide content for medical professionals, mental health advocates, law enforcement agencies, courts and criminal justice organizations, and share best practices on how to address mental health awareness and mental illness prevention. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Our first podcast episode is entitled Passion in the Psychiatry Field. Our guest today will be sharing her journey with us. She earned her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology at Simon Fraser University and her Doctor of Medicine at the University of British Columbia. She is currently a psychiatry resident at Dalhousie University in Canada, working with the Nova Scotia Health Authority. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Patricia Seelin. Dr. Seelin, good day to you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So how did you get started with your pursuit uh, uh, of the study of psychiatry? Talk me through it. Well, I first started studying psychiatry um, when I heard about mental illnesses in passing when I was a teenager, actually. So I started Googling terms. I started reading up on them more. Uh, I was very intrigued by psychological topics. So that's why I took psychology courses for my senior electives in high school. And at that point, I decided that I liked it enough that I wanted to do an undergraduate degree in psychology. So I pursued that in university while also doing pre-medical courses on the side. And outside of school, I volunteered a lot, and most of that was in some way connected with mental health. For example, I worked at a crisis line for a couple years, and I ran a lot of workshops for young girls on topics like body image and self-esteem. And then I was lucky enough to be accepted into medical school on my first application, and I applied for a psychiatry residency in my final year, which is the postgraduate training that I'm doing now. Oh, interesting. And you mentioned that you had an elective for psychology in high school? Yeah, um, my high school uh, offered elective options in 11th and 12th grade. Mm-hmm. And options included things like history and psychology and a few other things. And I chose psychology. Oh, I wish when I was in high school, they'd offer psychology as an elective. I think that would have been really, really an eye opener for me. Awesome. Oh, they didn't offer it? That's a shame. I, I love know. Psych course in in high school. Uh, I know I've been away from you know public school education for a while, but uh, depending on I guess maybe the district and the state, if they do offer that as an elective, maybe that's some some research I have to do on my end in terms of what uh, what specific curriculums that uh, possibly might offer that as an elective. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, which hurdles did you personally face, and how did you overcome them? 
Well, when I decided that I wanted to be a psychiatrist, I faced a lot of discouragement from family and friends. And I think part of that is because of the stigma around psychiatry. It was worse when I was a teenager, and unfortunately, there's still some stigma in existence today. But part of that is also because many people said med school is too difficult and I shouldn't even try, which actually only made me want to prove myself and made me want to try harder to achieve my goals. So as much as it was frustrating that people didn't believe in me, it also kind of egged me on. But another hurdle is that med school actually was very difficult, especially for someone who went into medicine knowing that I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Uh, most medical students complete a science degree. So I was considered a non-traditional medical student because I did a Bachelor of Arts in psychology. That's great for someone who wants to be a psychiatrist, but the med school curriculum is very science heavy and kind of light on the mental health topics, or at least it was when I went to med school. So the result of this is that I found med school to be both pretty dry and also very challenging academically until I finally made it to the psychiatry rotations, when I really had a chance to shine and show what I knew from my psychology undergrad. So I'm happy I made it through all the science and all the other stuff with med school and rose to the challenge and got my MD regardless, so that today I can continue on my path into psychiatry. And, and are you working with other physician, uh, resident physicians that maybe have just recently graduated and have, have they shared their experiences uh, with you in terms of what they went through going through the programs? Yeah, when we're in residency, uh, a, a big part of residency is also um, kind of mentoring younger uh, residents um, and medical students as well. And sometimes you see people who are struggling through med school because they want to be in psychiatry and med school is tough if you want to work in mental health specifically. But sometimes you do see people who love all aspects of medicine and um, sometimes they're just on a psychiatry rotation because they have to be and they're not interested in it. Or they really like psychiatry, but they also really like something else like general family medicine. And they're they're kind of weighing the two different options. Um, and, and so they, they, they're they people who are doing well with the science aspect of med school, even if they feel kind of drawn to the mental health aspect uh, of psychiatry. Awesome. Okay. What compelled you to be a psychiatrist? Well, I've actually wanted to work in psychiatry since I was a young teenager. Uh, and I... That's the reason is because I grew up in a chaotic, dysfunctional home. And I think that environment led me to wonder why people behave the way they do, what drives certain actions and behaviors. So I happened to learn about mental illnesses from pop culture, from movies, from hearing people mention mental illnesses in passing. So that's when I started reading into it on my own and taking more electives and things like that to uh, explore psychology further. And from that point on, I felt drawn to pursue psychiatry for my career. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I definitely do see the changes within, I think, how we address mental health issues and how we look at psychology. And definitely you, you mentioned earlier about breaking the stigma, which, we, you know, we, that's still an issue in, in terms of what is the, the, the stigma and the stereotypes behind going into into that field or actually seeking help from a therapist or a counselor uh, that, that has that expertise, uh, which is definitely, definitely a continuing, a continuing uh, concern. Hopefully we can definitely break the stigma with that. Yeah. It's yeah. A- and I do think stigma is getting better over time. There's, mm-hmm. there have been a lot of campaigns and there's been a lot of work and, and you see people on social media uh, trying to be more open about mental health or mental illnesses and whatever struggles people are going through. Mm-hmm. And I think that's overall helping to change the culture. It's just something that takes more time. Okay. Is there a question that I didn't ask? Oh, uh, yeah. I just thought that I could explain a little bit about what postgraduate training is like in psychiatry. Yes. Uh, since sometimes people get confused and they think that I'm a full-fledged psychiatrist. Actually, <laughs> psychiatry residents like myself are supervised in their practice during residency. We're mm-hmm. only to practice independently when we finish the residency program. Mm -hmm. The first few years of psychiatry training are very generalist, meaning we work with all psychiatric conditions, including things like schizophrenia, personality disorders, mood and anxiety disturbances, and so on. Mm -hmm. This training will happen both in hospitals and psychiatry, psychiatric wards, and also outside of hospitals in outpatient clinics. 
Uh, and then in the last couple years of postgraduate training, that's when we can pursue electives of our own choice. So some people focus more on eating disorders. Some people focus more on uh, psychotic disorders. I'm personally planning on focusing more on depression, anxiety, and trauma during those electives. And then after I complete the program, I plan to open up my own clinic, focusing on supporting people with these challenges in particular. Uh, but a lot of people uh, do end up working in hospitals, and they may or may not uh, have a private clinic on the side. Okay. Well, we we'll definitely look forward to hearing more from you in terms of your journey being a resident physician and getting that pri- private practice. So definitely, uh, we definitely appreciate you coming on and speaking with us, Dr. Seelan. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Patricia Seelan, who works with the Nova Scotia Health Authority and is also a resident physician. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Okay. You're welcome. All right. You are tuned in to Can You Hear Me? Let's talk about mental health. Thanks for listening to the Can You Hear Me podcast. Be sure to visit MIPPLLC.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and find out more information about us. Until next time.